Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now the data is in and over 80% of people who purchased a home in 2021 and 2022 have buyer's remorse for a whole bunch of different reasons. Now, being in the real estate industry, I can honestly tell you that I am personally disappointed with the conduct of so-called professionals. It seems to me that people are more worried about looking smart and appearing intelligent than showing comprehension or empathy for the common homeowner. And the problem was so many people have the fear of missing out that they betrayed their own goals and did not stay true to themselves. So today I'm going to dig deep on interest rates because I'm tired of hearing these so-called experts say, well, back in my day, rates were 15%, so 7% is not a big deal. So just buy a house, which is disgusting. Then we're gonna take a look at equity and what will really happen and what does it look like to be trapped upside down in your house? Followed by the third thing, which is inventory because I am also so tired of hearing people say we won't have a price crash because we don't have enough inventory because those people are dead wrong and are marching people off a cliff to financial room. And then at the end of the video, as usual, I'm gonna conclude with a few points that I really want you guys to pay attention to. But remember guys, I'm not your financial advisor, even if you want me to be, even if I want you to be, and maybe that's true, but this is my personal YouTube channel. Guys, I don't wanna get into trouble. We don't have a business relationship, but my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in all things real estate in Texas. I'm also a renter, a husband, a father, someone that's completely outworked right now trying to stay ahead of unaffordability and inflation because I'm not going to be a loser this time around like I was in 2008 with the foreclosure. So you guys, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't leave me hanging, guys. Please shoot me a comment below. But either way, guys, let's get started on a survey right now that goes into buyer's remorse. Now, this was a survey done recently from US News, and I wanted to kind of just point out how they conducted their surveys, guys. And here's what it says. We conducted a homeowner survey of 2,000 recent home buyers. This is 44% of people that purchased in 2021, 56% of people that purchased in 20. 22. Now, obviously, guys, I am not one of these people that said, you know, don't buy in 2020, don't buy in 2021. Personally, I got out of the housing market around late 2021 and I started warning people early in 2022. I honestly think that some of the people that purchased in 2019 and 2020 actually got really good deals because of how low the interest rates were, which they were extremely low. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the buyers that purchased in 2021 and in 2022, take a look at the results. All right, and here's a breakdown of the results. So 83% of recent homeowners have felt new homeowner anxiety since buying their home. Now, 45% of the recent homeowners are nervous about the value decreasing. So 45% of those people think their home is going to decrease in value. Now, 59% of those people are, you know, recent homeowners are worried about break-ins. So essentially what that saying is, a lot of people settled. And you guys, that's another point. That's what you got in 2021 and in 2022 if you didn't buy, okay? You got what was left. We got junk houses that were overpriced. We had no inventory. 36% of recent homeowners are, are nervous about whether they'll eventually be able to resell their home. So you guys, obviously this shouldn't be happening if, you know, Home ownership, you know, especially for your primary residence, you know, you shouldn't have these types of anxieties. That's why I'm always telling you guys, you know, make your own mind up. A lot of these professionals are motivated by their own financial gain. And a lot of these investors that say, you know, this is what you need to do and that's what you need to do. You guys, those investors are highly leveraged. And not only are they highly leveraged, they have millions and millions of dollars to get through the housing market collapse. Do you? I don't, I maybe have 10, 20, $30,000, right? I don't have a lot of money to be wasting here like these investors. So again, I say to you guys, be careful, be super duper careful to who you're listening to because I've noticed a trend and that is these people just want to feel smart or these people just want to make a commission. Either way, you guys, it's not giving us the information that applies to our own specific situation as normal 
Americans. So now what I want to do is confront all of the people that say, oh, back in my day, interest rates were double digits, or I got a 10% or a 15%. I'm going to dig deep into that, guys, and I'm going to show you what home values were back then because, you know, it drives me crazy when people say that because they're not taking into consideration home values right now are $450,000. When people got 18% interest rates, the home value was what? 50,000? Horrible point to make, but let's go according to the data. Take a look. All right, so here's the Fred economic data, 30 year fixed rate mortgage average in the US. And here's what I wanna point out guys, essentially. So right now we're at you know an average rate of 7.08%, but again, you guys, more than likely your interest rate is actually gonna be even higher than that. So keep that in mind. But I wanna point out that the last time that interest rates were this high was 20 years ago. Look at this, all the way over here, you guys, 20 years ago around April, 2002. So when people make that comparison, it drives me crazy because we're at a two decade high, but let's take it a step further and let's see what home values were the last time interest rates were this high, which is when I graduated high school. Take a look. All right. So this is median sales price of homes sold for the United States. I really love these graphs guys, but I'm going to go back all the way to Q2 of 2002. So Q2 of 2002, the median sales price guys was $187,200. So the last time rates were this high, the median sales price was not 454,000 because right now, as you can see here, the average median sales price, $454,000, you guys. That is astronomical. Now let's look at a mortgage calculator now. And I really hope you guys kind of formulated an opinion because this is all leading you to the same conclusion, which I'll tell you guys at the end of this video. You know, instead of taking the median sales price times 80%, average down payment at 20%, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna use the full median sales price as our loan amount, okay? But again, that usually doesn't happen because you have a down payment. So let's start with the first one at 187. 200. Okay. So at 187,200, which was 20 years ago, which was the median sales price. The last time rates were this high, your average mortgage payment guys, $1,256. That's why I hate that comparison. Now let's fast forward to today and let's put in our current median sales price of $454,900. That means the payment goes from, okay, you guys get this, right? It goes from $1,256 to $3,051. That's why this is such a horrible comparison. All right, now let's confront the next things. Back in my day, I bought with double digit interest rates. All right, so let's now look at the when were when was the last time interest rates hit the double digits, okay? And that was all the way back to about November of 1990. Let's go there real quick, 1990. So here... November 1990. Okay. So the last time interest rates were double digits was November 9th of 1990. So all these people saying, Oh, I had a 15, I had a 10%. You guys are crazy. Look how long ago this was The The U S was completely different back then, but let's take a look at what the median sales price was back in November 9th of 1990, because all of these intelligent people want to make this point. Let's take a look. All right. And again, I'm going to median sales price for Fred. I'm changing the custom date here, guys. All right, let's go to Q4 of 1990. So as you can see, if Q4 of 1990, that was the last time interest rates were in the double digits. And you can see the median sales price, guys, was $121,500. So the last time interest rates were double digits were when houses were $121,500, which means houses are three times more expensive right now. So, so can we get one third of that interest rate, right? Y'all see my point, but let's take it a step further and let's look at the mortgage calculator. Let's change this interest rate to 10.02 right now. All right. And then let's change the loan amount to the loan amount back, <laughs> the loan amount back then, which was 121,500. Now you can see the payment for mortgages back then a thousand and sixty eight dollars all right now let's change it to the sales price from today again this is you know technically the loan amount will be five percent or twenty percent less but i'm just making this easier okay so i'm going to put in four fifty four nine hundred so if uh you know by that rationale the mortgage payment instead of a thousand dollars is roughly four thousand dollars at a ten percent interest rate and you guys this is why that argument that interest rates were way higher when i was in real estate back 20 years ago it doesn't work. It's an absolutely horrible narrative, y'all. And generally who's making those narratives are big time investors that have millions of dollars that, you know, in liquidity that can essentially easily get through a housing market crash. So they can afford 
to be overly optimistic. I can't afford to be overly optimistic. I need to be cautious as should you. Now what I wanna do is show you guys how median sales price lags behind interest rates because a lot of people are now chewing on that narrative. Well, oh, interest rates are 7%, but home values aren't going down. You guys, here's the thing. It's not the stock market. It takes time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the time frame it took the first round of interest rate hikes and what we can expect moving forward into the year. All right, guys. So I want to try to explain this with just one form. And what's really, really important that you guys understand is quantitative tightening happened March of 2022. So this horror, this vertical yellow line represents when quantitative tightening started. This red line going up here represents median sales price in 2022. So you can see, here's the vertical yellow line. This is when quantitative tightening started. But even though quantitative tightening started, look at this, home values continue to go up into July. Do you see that? So there was a lag of what, four months? So the first round of rate hikes took four months roughly for home values to start going down. Do you guys see that? So again, the lag was until about July. So we had a March to July lag. Now, obviously what happened here is when it started free falling. This green line represents from July till about October when the interest rates really started hitting pricing. Now, obviously the interest rates kind of balanced out and home values plateaued. But the reason I'm showing you guys this is we had a recent hike in interest rates. So more than likely there's gonna be a three month lag. So let me show you when they started their last round of interest rate hikes. Okay, now going back to Fed economic data, you can kind of see they started interest rate hikes again August 18th, you see that? So as of August 18th of 2022, interest rates started going up again. They kind of plateaued here and zigzagged a little bit, but they went up again as of August 18th. So looking at this map, once again, if they started interest rate hikes right here, Okay, more than likely if it's the same lag as last time, just say it's three, say it's three month lag. That means September, October, November, more than likely we're not gonna see substantial price declines from the increased interest rates until after midterms. What? After midterms or mid November. So I'm telling you guys this because you need to calm down and be careful who you're listening to because I hear this argument all over the place. Right now is not a good time to buy because the prices haven't gone down enough. Let the Federal Reserve do its job and let the interest rates continue to put pressure on the prices. Now what I'm gonna do, you guys, is I'm gonna show you what it looks like to be trapped upside down in your house. So essentially, let's see how people did that purchased back in July when, when interest rates were lower and values were higher. Let's look. All right, guys, so we're going back to Redfin here. Now, this is Redfin's median sales price for the national average of the United States. So essentially, we, on a national average scale, peaked in June. Okay, so we peaked in June. Obviously, different metro areas peaked at different times. Some still haven't peaked, but it is what it is. So if you were one of the people that purchased here in June, you purchased a home on average at 392000 If we fast forward to to right now, homes have gone down three to $366,000, which represents a difference of $26,000. So now what I want to show you is what were interest rates right here and where are interest rates right here. And what does that look like? Okay. Are we winners? Are we losers? If we waited, let's take a look. Now, in order to do that, we first have to understand where interest rates were. So let's see. So as you can see here around June 16th of 2022, the average interest rate was 5.78%. So we're going to use 5.78% for anyone that purchased in June. And we're going to use the higher interest rate of 7.78%. 0.8%, which is the average right now. You guys hang on with me here because this is a really important point that I'm trying to make here. Now, again, I'm just using this, the median sales price as the entire loan amount. Normally that's not accurate because you have a down payment, right? So I just want to make that clear because I always get haters that hold on to a slight uh, mistake and they spin the whole thing out of control. So I just wanted to point out that if you purchased a home in July, in June, okay, for 392,000 at the average interest rate of 5.78%, your payment on on average would be $2,295. Okay, so $2,295. Now let's decrease the loan amount, okay, to 366, which is the median sales price right now, and let's increase the interest rate to 7.08%. Now, what you may notice is the payment is now higher, okay? So this payment is higher than it was back in June. However, what's really important to understand, guys, in June, option number one, 
you lost $26,000 in equity. So let's see how much the difference is in payment. So let me just bring up a calculator real quick to show you guys. So if we take the higher payment, $2,455 minus $2,295, that means the difference in mortgage payment is $160 a month. But remember you guys, you're trapped upside down $26,000. So saving $160 a month, what does that give you? Let's see, let's see how many years it takes to recoup the $26,000 you lost, all right? So I'm gonna times this by 12 months. That means you're paying $1,920. So let's take the $26,000, which you're upside down. Let's divide by 1920. And what this essentially is saying, guys, it's gonna take you 13. Okay, listen to me really quickly here. This is really important, okay? So if you bought back in June versus right now, on average, you're upside down in your house $26,000. And here's the thing, you guys, that's if things just go sideways. More than likely, values are going to continue to go down. So it's probably going to be more than 13.5 years, but it is what it is. But here's the thing that I'm really trying to get at. It's going to take them roughly 13 years just to catch up. But how much longer is it going to take for them to gain equity? Think about that. So 13.5 years. Now, here's another thing. More than likely in thir within 13 years, you can probably refinance. But here's the biggest thing of all. If for some reason, those people that purchased in June have to sell or they have a desire to refinance, they can't do that because they're upside down in their house by $26,000. In order to get a refinance, you have to qualify for that. One of the qualifying factors is L. TV. So in other words, you guys, to say, you know, it looks like their payments $160 lower, but they're upside down $26,000. So what situation is better? Okay. Think about that. Option number two, if I bought today, at least I'm not going to be in as bad shape as the person that's upside down $26,000. So let's look at the last thing right now. I constantly hear, oh, you got to buy right now. Homes are only going to go up because we don't have enough supply. Let's take a look at that. Let's look at supply and let's look at what's really happening. All right, guys. So we're looking at weeks of supply or months of supply, which is definitely what we want to keep our eyes on from an inventory standpoint, because it takes into account demand. And it also takes into account the fact that sales are down 35%. Because remember, people that sell their house, 71% of them rebuy a house. So if there's less people selling, there's less supply needed. Do you guys get it? But here's where we're at right now. We're at 12.4 weeks. So now what I'm going to do is show you where we're at compared to 2021. All right. So let me click this button and add 2021. Okay. Let's see where we're at. All right. So as you can see, we are ahead. This is the black line. This is 2022. We are over where we were at in 2021, but let's look at 2020. Okay. Okay, again, the red line is 2020. We have more months of supply than we did in both 2021 and in 2020. You guys, isn't that astonishing? But let's look at 2019 as well. And only 2019. So you can see 2019, September 23rd, 2019, we had 15.7 weeks of supply. Right now we have 12.4. So you guys, we are less than a month away from having a, the, almost the same amount of inventory than we did pre-pandemic. Isn't that astonishing to you? That narrative that these people are saying, you guys, is about to end and blow up in their faces because the reality is we're talking about a price crash. I'm not talking about foreclosures or unemployment. I'm talking about the fact that homes went up about 40% in value in just two years through artificial insemination. I'm sorry, artificial stimulus? Is that, I'm, I'm sorry, what, what am I looking for here? But regardless, because of the COVID money and, the, and all the trillions of dollars, you guys, this is really clear, right? You guys get it, right? So again, going back to realtors and these investors and these professionals, they're not normal people. Some of them have millions of dollars. Some of them lack empathy. And here's the other thing. Some of them got lucky because during 2009 to right now, it was some of the easiest times in US history to become a successful investor. Unless you were like me, I had a foreclosure and a repo. So I was on timeout and push to the sidelines. Now there's a few things that I want to end on guys. Number one, try to look at property as an investment, even if it's not your financial investment. The reason is professionals, unfortunately will take advantage of your emotion. And that my friends is a fact. Number two, understand that none of this None of what I'm saying matters if you don't keep up with and stay ahead of unaffordability.
You must work right now in order to get ahead, get out of debt, save more cash and make more money. Number three, you must stay true to your goals and understand you need to take the recommendations of financially invested people with a grain of salt right now, especially because sadly, most people are more worried about their commission and about looking good versus your financial future. Think about that. You guys have a lot of things stacked against you. That's why I keep making these videos and I keep trying to tell you guys, stay empowered, do your own thinking, credit, income, assets. Those are the three things you guys need to work on. Now, other than that, you guys, happy Sunday. Big shout out to all my members and all my subscribers. Much love to you guys, to all the members in my YouTube group, Scott, Orlando, Michael, Todd, Steve. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Iron sharpens iron. But regardless, you guys, I hope you guys got some value, perspective, and insight from today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck. And I hope you win.